join us and discover beautiful beaches, rugged landscapes, pretty towns, desolate mountain ranges that sweep down to stunning lakes, unique architecture, history and folklore, no shamrocks, no shillelaghs and definitely no shenanigans, just make it Ireland. After the release of Naked Ireland videos that looked at the demographic change in the Loyalist village of Belfast and in Belfast Sandy Row, I was asked if I would take a look at the Lower Ormo area, a Republican enclave of South Belfast, with a view to seeing how it has changed, if at all, in recent years. As we stand on the corner of University Street here and pan round, we can immediately see that Lower Ormo too, like the village and Sandy Row, has had its old kitchen housing stock redeveloped and we'll have a look at that later. But first, we'll take a walk up the lower Ormo Road itself. The Ormo Road, now also a very ethnically diverse part of the city, is a busy thoroughfare into the city centre. It's divided into the lower and upper Ormo by the River Lagan, which we'll see in a moment as we'll be walking up that far. As we walk along here, the first point of interest is the Hatfield Bar. This is a beautiful, ornate pub that's become much more accessible to people these days than it was during the Troubles. I shot this film around Halloween so you can see it's all decked out for the occasion. We'll have a closer look at this pub in a later video. How the pub has changed over the years is perhaps a good way to measure how the area in general has changed. Unfortunately, it's impossible to talk about these working class areas of Belfast without referencing the Troubles. And this memorial on the site of Sean Graham's bookmaker's shop commemorates the death of five innocent people who were gunned down inside the shop in 1992 purely because they were Catholics. Nine others were wounded in the attack by the UDA. It was carried out as a reprisal attack for the T-Ban bombing some weeks before and was typical of the tit-for-tat violence of the time. What was more alarming was that the police ombudsman an organisation whose role it is to investigate contentious behaviour by the police found that members of the police had colluded with informers who were involved in the attack. Like the village and Sandy Row, this place has suffered a lot during the Troubles. But has 25 odd years of relative peace brought change? And has that change been positive or negative? I was particularly interested to see if the area was still strewn with Republican murals as that was one of the things I noticed about the Loyalist areas. However, I was pleased to see that it wasn't. In fact, I think the new murals that adorn these walls are really quite impressive and something that I think the whole community can be very proud of. Back out onto the road again. Looking down Rutland Street, we can see that much of the old housing stock still exists, although we'll check out the new estate of Lavinia later on. Meanwhile, on the road we can clearly see evidence of a demographic shift, as the various ethnic minorities have made this area their place of business. We can see the Bangla Bazaar Asian and African foods across the road there, and an African Caribbean supermarket on this side. And a hairdresser's. So the question I asked in the village was, was loyalism disappearing in that area? I think the conclusion was that while those Protestant areas still exhibited fairly frank murals in support of various paramilitaries, regardless, the natural displacement of a younger generation and an influx of new arrivals from ethnic communities caused that to be the case. Is it the same here? Undoubtedly, yes, the same phenomenon has taken place, but yet there's no defiant display of republicanism here. No, or very few, murals or flags. No painted curbstones, etc. This area will certainly have the same social problems as its loyalist counterparts in the city, but perhaps it's moved on mentally. There's the offices of the local Sinn Féin MLA. Of course, they're unable to sit in government at the time of making this video because of the Democratic Unionist boycott of the Assembly. But perhaps that'll change and the two communities here 
or should I say the wealth of communities, can get back to working together for the benefit of everyone. Now, after what I've just said, we come across this mural. It's certainly political and the only one of its kind that I saw here, but it's perhaps at least a little more satirical than the image of a masked loyalist holding a gun. I guess it's the kind of cartoon you might see in a satirical magazine. Perhaps you have thoughts on this? If so, let me know in the comments. We've now got as far as the embankment on the River Lagan, and we see this interesting sculpture, which has a piece of verse whose exact translation from the 9th century Irish is a little in dispute. But this is a tribute to the poet Seamus Heaney, the Blackbird of Belfast Loch. Then I noticed this plaque on the gable wall opposite, which sadly is much less uplifting. It basically commemorates the life of a young 16 year old who while daubing some graffiti on a wall was shot and killed by a plain clothes policeman. No one was ever convicted. It was just one of those bizarre and tragic events that plagued this part of the world for so long. I remembered this incident well actually and was so saddened to be reminded of it here. And here we are now at the Ormo Bridge. For several years this was a point of standoff between loyalists and nationalists. Loyalists wanted the parade down the road and nationalists of Lower Ormo didn't want the march to go through their area. I'm keen to move on from troubles related events but it's hard to avoid making reference to them when you start examining these working class parts of Belfast. I head now round the streets that make up this Lower Ormo community. Some nice little terrace housing. It's old but it's still looking quite good. And you can see here how this gable wall has had what was previously painted on it removed and that would have been done with permission of the local community. So I guess the removal of these sectarian murals is a positive step forward. I like the trees along this road. And here we see some more modern houses, albeit built to blend in with the old. They look pretty good. We're now going to move into the newly built estate called the Lavinia area. Immediately I see murals and I'm keen to see if they're sectarian or republican. On a closer inspection, they seem to be community youth murals about mental health, etc. So while the subject of the murals points to the social difficulties experienced in the area, at least they're positively addressing them. As we enter the estate, we see that it's really quite a pleasant community, neatly trimmed hedges, and there's a bit of space in the way it's all planned. I saw a couple of Palestinian flags. Republican areas tend to sympathise with the plight of the Palestinians, while loyalist areas display Israeli flags. But other than that, there were no Irish tricolours flying here, or in the older streets, no painted curbstones and no Republican murals. I'm hoping that's all a good sign. The Ormer Road is just behind those houses in front of us now. And we'll finish our film with this last look at the Hatfield as we've come full circle. Please give the film a like if it was interesting. I'd absolutely love it if you'd subscribe to help build the channel. And I'll see you all in the next Naked Ireland video.